Well, gosh, a year ago, almost exactly, we, Levi was having some symptoms that were, we just weren't sure whether it was something that we needed to address. He started wetting the bed at night again, you know, at six. How long had he been dry? Oh, he'd been potty trained since three. Oh, wow. So, um, but you know, we just weren't sure, does he have a UTI and, you know, right, exactly. Was he tired? You know, he just wasn't waking up when he needed to go to the bathroom. And because those were his only symptoms that we were aware of at the time in hindsight, we noticed more because we mm-hmm. learned more and so that was a couple of weeks where he was getting a little better when i put you know gave him some naturopathic uti medicine and things and it would go away and then they would come back and yeah so then unfortunately while we were traveling uh his symptoms got really severe to the point where i noticed that he looked emaciated like he had lost weight mm. and when you only weigh 50 pounds losing five is, is significant a lot. and he was eating and he was eating right he probably was, as much as as much as, as normal ever. right but for whatever reason, his weight, he dropped yeah. weight. Was and I could see it in his lot? hands. Oh, he was drinking all the time. Okay. Very thirsty. Okay. So we had started already doing enough research. We thought we suspected the right. diabetes. And at that point, since we were out of town, finding a pediatrician that would take us in to do a blood test was like, you know, I called like 10 offices and we oh, couldn't. Wow. So we just had to go to the ER. Okay. And so, so he was in the hospital for a couple of days. Sure enough, when he went in, his blood sugar was at like 580. Okay. So, so just to pause on diabetes, type one diabetes, There's two types, right? Type two is the kind where you get overweight and you stress your insulin pancreas to the point where you start having high blood sugars. Type one diabetes is thought to be almost always autoimmune Mm -hmm. and the symptoms are pretty dramatic with type one because as it happens, it starts getting severe quickly. Mm -hmm. And the classic thing is you're not making enough insulin so an insulin is what drives your sugar back into the tissue mm-hmm. right so it's not in your bloodstream so if you don't have enough insulin your sugars are getting higher and higher and the only thing the body can do is try to get rid of it so you start dumping sugar through your kidneys into your urine and that makes you pee a lot mm-hmm. it makes you thirsty because you're peeing a lot right and and you're hungry you're losing calories sugar is going out of your body right so you're losing calories and you're hungry and you're drinking a lot and you're losing weight because mm-hmm. you're losing those calories. That's a classic presentation that he had. Right. right. Okay. So carry on. Okay. So we were in the hospital for a couple of days and it is, as any parent who's gone through this before, it is a fire hose that comes at you because it's a two day intensive education of how to start calculating carbohydrates and giving your kids shots and how much insulin and what to look for if they get too low. And you you become a nurse overnight. Yeah. And so it's pretty intense and um we went through that while we were in colorado we were working with the barbara davis center which they're pretty renowned for the the midwest area for um people come from all over yeah. to work with so them. you were in a good place we were in a very good place yeah. for education and um but then when we got back a couple of days later we're like well how did we get here because i have a fundamental faith belief that God didn't make our bodies to destroy themselves. That's what autoimmune is. Right. It's like our bodies were designed to heal. Right. We have an immune system that's supposed to be helping us. So what happened? What went wrong? Right. And so we just started, we started meeting with you and you suggested a number of tests that we could do. You know, what is his background? You know, had he been vaccinated? No. Okay. What else can we look at? You know, and so we went from there, I started doing some heavy metal testing. We were working with another clinic that did a very extensive DNA analysis. Now that's all outside of insurance, but we just wanted to, because once they, once you get diagnosed, you kind of just get into a program of how to manage your your disease. And this is, this is your diagnosis for the rest of your life. And we couldn't settle with our six year old saying, this is it. This is it for life. For life. So I'm going to want you to pick it up from there. But um, as a pediatrician who became aware of autoimmune conditions, and an an association, I'm not saying it's the only association, but vaccines are known, especially aluminum containing vaccines, well, and live virus vaccines, are known to trigger autoimmunity. And I had not recalled a single case of type one diabetes and I had several in my practice in an unvaccinated patient. And since I had a clinic with unvaccinated patients, this was new. You're, You're my first and only case. Right. So I love your approach, though. You're you're going, hey, there's got to be a way. Right. And, and we learned some things with the DNA testing. We learned that he, sure enough, did have heavy metals, not from vaccines. He was very high in arsenic. Mm. And 
Um, I mean, we eat some rice, that's the place, but usually it comes through water contamination. Yeah. And if you go to the World Health Organization's website on arsenic, type 1 diabetes is a symptom or a side effect of arsenic poisoning. Fascinating. So, so you found maybe your the smoking source, gun. Right. And, yeah. well, and we have a suspicion of where his exposure came from a well that we lived on when he was in utero okay. and early stages of his life. We're no longer on that water source. We can't go back and test it. It's just a hypothesis. Right. But it's a pretty strong it's one. A pretty strong hypothesis. And it was a very old well. It's like a 1900s yeah. farmhouse, you yeah. know. So, um, and and folks, rice is a huge source of arsenic as well. Mm -hmm. There, there mm -hmm. are some rices that are less laden with arsenic than others. Right. Yeah. So we've been much more diligent about rinsing our rice. Yeah. We weren't always great about that. Yeah. But um, so yes, we're dealing with you know chelating heavy metals, arsenic in this case. With our older son, in one of our older videos, it was aluminum that we okay. were working on getting out, and that was vaccine related. Yeah. So we're working, um, your old clinic has us working with selenium to help mm -hmm. chelate the arsenic. Yeah. So we've been on that treatment and then also just adjusting to how best to utilize the tool of insulin. It is a great tool. Um, I'm very grateful for it. It's life-saving. Right. And I also don't want my son to be on pharmaceuticals the rest of his life. Yeah. We've never had to, like, I've never had to deal with a pharmacy and insurance until now. And yeah. it's it's a whirlwind untangle that and navigate you know where to get needles and test strips and you know glucose monitors and yeah. all of that it's a lot involved it is so um uh, but then we came across this stem cell clinic actually when we first met with you when he was just diagnosed two weeks like two weeks in you'd mentioned you know stem cell therapy was something that was coming up but it just wasn't very progressed in the states yet right and um there are ways you could try to stimulate your own stem cells but that wasn't really great for children because right. that usually in, would call it included fasting, fasting. Yeah. right so it was just on our radar and then we heard some a podcast from joe rogan about he had one of the doctors from the stem cell clinic in panama he's an american doctor but has a practice in panama because they have for the last 20 to 25 years been very great about supporting that research and start like fast tracking it and getting it available and um so we watched a number of testimonies of families that have gone through that clinic we reached out to the clinic and i think one of the most confidence building things that we um, experienced is that we had other family and friend friends that were reaching out to the clinic for their own health needs and the clinic turned them down because they felt like they wouldn't actually be a good candidate in the sense that it may not actually work. Now this was for like regeneration of uh, joints and things where there was no cartilage or anything. Right. But they weren't just going to take anybody and everybody because yeah. it's pretty spendy and it's not covered by insurance. Huh. So are you willing to share how spendy? Yeah. I mean, for a child, it's around $20,000. For that one trip? For one trip. Wow. And so... So I know the, so stem cells are undifferentiated cells that can become anything. Mm -hmm. And apparently we adults have a few of them circulating in our body because we have to regenerate tissue all the time as well. But that's not a good source. There's, it's, I don't even think it's doable economically. So most stem cells are coming, I think, from umbilical cord or bone marrow. Mm -hmm. Bone marrow is hard to get. It's expensive, it's painful. Um, so I think your clinic used umbilical cord yes. stem cells. Yes. And I think they must have some process of purifying and pulling out just the stem cells so there's mm -hmm. not the risk of autoimmunity. Right. And they said that, you know, we asked them why the umbilical cord versus the placental stem mm -hmm. cells. And they said that typically they don't have um, the host issues with umbilical stem cords, like with, gotcha. the, you know, blood types right. where like it right. doesn't match or whatever, yeah. and, you know, rejects like a host right. rejection. Yep. Yeah. So um, that was why they used umbilical cords. And okay. um, that's, I bet, a big part of the expense. Probably. I'm guessing. Getting a hold of a bunch of umbilical cords. Right, because they have the lab in the whole clinic. Right. So they're, source, they're doing the whole thing, yeah. start to finish. Yeah. So, yes. Huh. Yes, I'm sure it was. And, you know, this is where, as parents, we have to get creative of how, if this is important and um we want to pursue this what does that look like if you don't have twenty thousand dollars sitting you know in the bank account which we didn't we started tapping into 401ks and iras and it's like you don't realize that to, you, there is a way to withdraw early for medical expenses without penalty oh, you know? I didn't know that. and so you know we just start researching of how can we make this work because in our mind it was like we would 
we definitely want to retire and we have those plans one day but more importantly is that we get our son maybe every opportunity we can yeah for him not to wow you know live with us so you just you know whether it's family that helps you or whatever um finding a way and find a way yeah well, I, I, I'm guessing if we have success here, this will be one of the few cases, if not the first. For a type 1? For a type 1 diabetes uh, yes, resolution with stem cells? Yes. Yeah. I've seen improvements in adults. I've read papers and spoken with one of the doctors that was doing it with the fasting and having massive improvements. I don't know that they got a cure, though. They just got right. The biggest challenge, I don't know if the, the clinic addressed it in my mind, is... So in your body, presumably in your son's body, there are antibodies against Mm -hmm. the cells that make Mm -hmm. the insulin. Those antibodies, if they're still there, what prevents them from Right, just going right after the, the new cells. Yeah, we'll see. And so he has his routine uh, blood work with his endocrinologist in a couple of weeks. And okay. so they'll check for the antibodies as well okay. in that time frame. So we'll see if that's changed. Yeah. You know, we'll also see whether, you know, his liver and his kidneys are doing better. They take a, a pretty big stress toll. Like the kidneys are working for high blood sugar, or getting it out. Because even when you're on insulin, you're still battling highs all right. the time. So, so speaking of his insulin, what tell that journey. So when you first in the ER and mm-hmm. the sugar is 500 and something, they're giving a fair amount of insulin to get that Slowly. sugar. Slowly. They, they don't want him to crash and they don't yeah. know how sensitive he is. Right. Most people when they are diagnosed with type 1 have a honeymoon period where their pancreas is still trying to help out mm-hmm. and it's able to get some insulin into your body. And so they don't want to overcorrect. Yeah. Levi never had that. We don't know why it's a little bit atypical actually and so um so it took a while so over the course of weeks they slowly get more aggressive in their dosing you're working with a nurse daily on phone calls or texts and you know trying to get you know get their dosage right and you bring start bringing them down but then you know another thing that you suggested when we were here right after he got diagnosed was going low carb and how you know the i think to keep things simple for families that are so overwhelmed most clinics teach teach you just dose whatever he's eating. So if he's Food eating exchanges. pizza and he's eating yep. <laughs> donuts, you know, then just dose for that. Well, that's very high doses of insulin. Right. And the more you have in your body, the more likely are you to, cr- to crash, you right. know. And um, so we have found great success with changing our diet, being much low carb, more complex carbs when we have yes. them, things like that. That's then we're not chasing because he was on a roller coaster, just this yo yo. If you'd have these highs in the three hundreds, and then you're pumping him full of insulin to bring him down and then he would just bottom out really fast yeah. and then you're correcting and he'd go right back up and it was just and you feel like crap oh like yeah massive body. shifts of glucose yeah. does not feel good at he all. he did not feel no. well so so he's eating a, a low carb diet or, or mm-hmm. mostly complex carb diet mm-hmm. and he's been on that for how long we've been doing that for about five months okay. consistently and doing that what was his what happened with regards to his insulin need well, we're probably using half the amount of insulin we were before. That's and, great. Um, so it's very and smaller doses. And when you're doing smaller doses, the likelihood of overdosing right. is small. Right. It's pretty easy to, to correct. You yeah. know, it has a little glucose gummy or something. And um, it was like having a new kid again because now his blood sugars changes. They're still there, but they're not so dramatic. Okay, so he and feels better. He feels better, but then when he's not, when you're when your blood sugar is so high, you it's kind of like you're hangry. Because your body, your brain isn't getting what it needs, and it needs energy, it needs the glucose, and it's not getting it. Huh. And so you're very irritable, you know, just a, difficult to work with. Yeah. And so when when we changed our diet in partnership with the insulin, uh, it really was like having a new kid. Like he just would roll with things, like, and it wasn't a big deal, and you know, just things that bothered yeah. him so much. Yeah, before. he seems so mellow even now. Yeah. <laughs> Such a great kid. So uh, that is a huge piece of information. If you're watching and you are diabetic, either type actually, um, this idea of just eat whatever you want, just do food exchanges, it'll work out, give him more insulin if you need it, doesn't make sense to me, just common sense wise. But you're the first family I've had who really did that of just going complex carbs only and low carb mm-hmm. in general, mm-hmm. because yeah, your need for insulin goes way down. And so insulin's 
clearly part of the problem. It's toxic to the body. Right. And right. so keeping that low and more steady, you've got a happier kid. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so that's exciting. Yeah, and then the few days where we've made an exception, there was a pizza party at his school, and so you I... You can, you've got insulin. We made the exception, and and I was reminded very quickly why we don't eat this regularly, because his blood sugar was all over the map that wow. day. Even, and I was giving him an, an insulin injection three times what I normally would. Mm. And so then you're trying to work with the timing, and I got it too soon because the pizza didn't hit him right away, and so then he bottoms out, but I know the pizza's gonna catch up, and like it just is this <laughs> yeah, game. It's, it's tough. I have a brother who's... <laughs> Uh, 60 and he had it type 1 diabetes since he was 20 mm -hmm. and he's mastered it I mean he can drink a bunch of beer and manage that so mm -hmm. imagine how that is but not that that's a healthy idea <laughs> um, okay are there other things you're doing or contemplating doing um you think no we're wait right now we're waiting <laughs> And sure. that's sometimes hard. Yeah. So um, we're sticking with the low carb. Levi, I mean, he's six. So, you know, he has a hard time sometimes not sneaking uh, gummies. Like We've never had gummies in our house until now. We never really had candy, but we need them for medical purposes. And so we're working mm -hmm. with that of just, you know, incentives. Legos are really incentivizing for six-year-old kids. <laughs> so, right, right. Um, he's got a goal for the month to try to hit a certain um, average you know, to work for that Lego kit or whatever. So, and we're just waiting to see what the stem cells will do. You yeah. know, we don't know. We know that we were entering in uncharted territory, but it right. was worth trying. Right. The stem cell clinic themselves were saying, we can't promise anything. At the very least, they were hoping that inflammation in general in his body would come down because that is the um, kind of like the, I don't even know what you want to call it, but that's the villain of diabetes in the long run. You know, there's a laundry list of very scary side effects yes. of, of diabetes, of sure. the disease long term, including a shorter lifespan, right. and, you know, and um, heart disease and neuropathy and blindness, all very real things that many diabetics yeah. experience. Usually and it's 20, from inflammation. 30, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. Right. But he's just six. Right. So he's going to have to face those things if Young. we, yeah, potentially, if we don't have. In the height of his career or wanting right. to start a family. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's so. very, very astute and wise of you to, to do whatever you can right now. I'm I'm hoping that his story will be one that will open the door for so many others. Me too. We're not sure when we'll have to go back, but we do realize that it's a strong possibility. Yeah. Even the families that we talked to that were dealing with autism and other things they were gaining ground and it was significant, you know, right. and it was so funny. They would try to write it off like, oh, it's just little things. But when your child, autistic child, starts making eye contact with you right. again starts and talking. participating in your family, yeah. like that's huge, oh, life changing. Huge. Yeah. And so or can they're willing train. to come, yes, they, that we heard that one, <laughs> yeah. eight year olds, nine year olds finally getting potty trained, Right. you know? And so, I mean, it changes their world. And so they ca they're, they're down for their third chime or whatever. Yeah. And each time they're getting something. We don't know what that will look like for us, yeah. but we're hoping that um, we'll have a little bit of something tangible yeah. that we'll see in improvements. And then yeah. we know that we might need to be going back again. Yeah. We'll see. I think focusing as well as what you're doing on anything that can reduce the immune system being dysregulated, mm -hmm. right? The autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. So that'll be something we can talk about as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing this yeah. incredible story. Thanks for letting us be a part of it, even though it's not finished yet. Yeah, so. it's an ongoing story, and we'll, we'll, we'll give you all an update as as the opportunities arise. Yes, thank how's, you. How's your mental health? You know, that's a really great question. Thank you for asking it. It has been the hardest year in our family, for I sure. Um, it has been the hardest year in our marriage. Mm -hmm. just uh, the stress and I remember talking with people there's a real term I can't remember what it's called about diabetes fatigue just because of the management of it is mm -hmm. so hands-on mm -hmm. and so regular and uh, my husband is very hands-on he works from home which is great but he's often on calls and I'm not home with available. the kids and so not always available right. so he but he knows the routine he knows how to dose everything do the shots what he can eat so I have a great partner in it but I am the primary caregiver during the day with Levi. He, we do homeschool, so he's home with me. I can't even imagine, and I know many parents do, have to figure out how to integrate a child with diabetes into a school system. Right. So we're just not there. Um, but, you know, I felt like I had a leash where I couldn't be anywhere for more than 20 minutes mm. or 30 minutes because I needed to check on Levi. Or, 
And we didn't have a continuous glucose monitor for a long time, and those were difficult to get with insurance. They're very costly, and right. um, they're also not super accurate all the time. So even when you do have them, you still need to be checking blood regularly. So, um, so you don't get a break. No. And so, but it's, we've had a lot of great conversations in my family and with my husband about how to figure out. And so my husband is trying to, when he's not on calls, come out of his office, yeah, be more present around Levi so that I can go outside and work in the garden for two hours uninterrupted. Right. You know, like that, that's my, my specials place yeah. is just to be in the garden. So, um, we're doing more of that. And our, our 14 year old son, um, is learning he's been since the beginning he wanted to know how to give his brother shots and mm. how to to do those things so that we can still get out of the house and go on dates because oh, we were trying to nice. find a babysitter and yeah. that was just like really difficult to do you yeah. know most people wanted you know like i'm uh, do i have to hire a nurse to babysit you know when yeah. we're gone and so um you know big brother you know we keep a phone on and we coach him about how much to dose him but he can do the shots and he can That's check his good. blood and he knows what to do when levi gets low and we have friends that have come around us that have um, wanted to learn so that Levi can come over to their house without us yeah and spend time with his friends and well we got to get you to the point where you can have a date night well we are now because overnight date overnight night. well yes and we have done that okay it means flying my dad in <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one well he's the best uh, at um, he wasn't a paramedic but he's taken he's an outdoorsman so way to go taken, grandpa you know the Eagle Scout <laughs> type of guy yeah. and he's taken so many um, uh, first aid, more extensive classes and things okay. like that. So he just he knows how to deal it and deal with it. And he had coworkers that were type one diabetics. So yeah. Anyway, so Grandpa comes in town okay. once or twice a year, Good. and we are able to get away. So um, we we find a way. Good. You know? Good. But well, let's do all we can to make sure you guys <laughs> you. manage this. Uh, it's it's so hard. And thank you, Noah, for asking that question mm -hmm. because I've. Back when I was practicing, I had so many families that um, many of them hung in there, you know, who had right. difficult diagnoses. The autism one is a tough one, mm -hmm. where a lot of times it's the mom who had, carries the burden of, right. of the heavy lifting of the care. And oftentimes the dads feel like they're doing their part because they're providing, right. which they are. That's a very important part, but it's not enough for the, right. for the one that's got this 24-7 caregiving role and that need for a break and a respite right yeah and we've had some great family members too that ask the same questions they're like i hear about all the activities the kids are doing and dad's doing like what are you doing mom <laughs> for fun yeah and i was like i cannot answer that that's a difficult you know? one like and uh, it was helpful to have someone ask me that so yeah someone that i trust and that and it made me think and i was like you know what I'm going to take a tennis class because I used to play tennis and I yeah. haven't played in a long time and so it was just i hear pickleball is big now <laughs> it's not the same <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's helpful to have that community to challenge and check in about like, you yeah. know, what are you doing for you? Yeah. So. Well, that's that's your uh, to-do task now mm -hmm. is expand that a little. Yeah. 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 Self, you know, in the in the airlines, what you hear them put your own mask on first, mm -hmm. right before mm -hmm. you put it on mm -hmm. your kid. Now, obviously, when your kid's going down, you have to, and you're not going down, you right. take care of your kid. Right. But uh, you don't want to wait till it's too late. Right. To take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, the whole family, it's been um, uh, just resilient in the whole year. It doesn't it just impact Levi and my husband and I. His siblings are significantly impacted, you sure. know. And um, whether they they had to roll with the diet changes, you know, things like that. Right, and right. they're learning how to care for their brother in emergencies or even just in maintenance, you know, if we're not around. Yeah. Um, but what then also it? like the amount of attention we had to give Levi for several weeks mm -hmm. as we're trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're older, so at least, it, you know, but they were able to kind of understand, but that still is hard. Yeah, you know, what about when, me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what about what I want to do and my yeah. needs and yeah. so. Oh, I, I, I know only to a tiny degree because I raised so many kids mm -hmm. and yeah, I couldn't meet all their needs mm -hmm. at all. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for sharing his story and your journey and um, we're rooting for you all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to give you a good update sometime in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for so, watching, everybody. All right. Bye.